finals time is among us. Let's see who's going to get up the very first game of this match. So Tsubaki picking his team. Imagine if he goes back to his Saku team. <laughs> Debated. Debated indeed. It looks like it's the exact same team, of course, because his lock squad rules. So a bit, you know, of course, aggressive on both sides. The only difference is a Mashoki a mix. This mix might be giving Tsubaki a bit problems. We do have it against the Barnshi. We do have it against the Seismunch, but that kind of works both ways. Seismunch with that wreck really puts a hurting on the mix. So we'll see. I think teams are pretty evened out. That Cernif though feels a bit bad though if you're on Ricky Tan's side because Cernif really does a lot of work to a lot of Temtems for uh, Little Asia. So Tsubaki not trying to deal with anything of that Skunch. So that will be the first ban. All right, and Ricky right. Tan thinking what is going to be the first ban for himself. He's looking at the Quetzal fish, and it is. I mean, even though he has answers to it, uh, not taking a risk. He doesn't like those water cannons. He doesn't like the Quetzalena, so takes care of it. And we're seeing a lot of people ban the Fire Koish, which is reasonable. It tends to get out of hand if you leave it alone. So Ricky Tan making his ban. Tsubaki making his ban. Now it's time to pick the starters. How does Tsubaki want to start on blue side here? Both tamers really thinking about it. They took their time with their bans as well. They don't want to mess up, especially in such a uh, high pressure situation. Finals, of course, but at the same time, both players are really good. So making a mistake will definitely be capitalized on. So, Seismunch picked up as Tsubaki Chan's opening, of course. No water cannon user, so no direct punish here from uh, Ricky. Uh, there is, of course, the mix and the Barnshi to do beta bursts mm -hmm. and uh, e, mass, uh, e manipulation, but they come with their own downsides, especially when Tsubaki has the counter pick on the opening. Yeah, exactly. So you pick up those mental Temtems and Tsubaki's like, all right, bet. Let's pick up our Velash, turn one Crystal Spikes or even turn one Madness buff to make matters worse. So Ricky Tan does indeed settle on the mix. Who's going to be his secondary Temtem? He's eyeing the size much. And you know, that would be pretty poet poetic. The first tournament of this Maisie season, finals time, game number one, two size much to start off the game. Uh, I kind of like it. I mean, Valash is a threat. Yalis is a threat. So, Ricky Tan, not too bad. Uh, however, pick up the size Munch. You leave Tsubaki with the Cerniv. So, it's a bit of a feels bad. But it's more so because Tsubaki has blue side here. So Ricky Tan Ooh, did not Volarin. like that Cerneef there, so it does pick up a good neutral Temtem with the Volarin. Does Tsubaki want to reciprocate it? A Volarin of his own? I think it might be best. Valash feels okay, but maybe too risky as a as an opener. Yeah, so mix mix Volarin here, sort of standard just to cover a lot of ground. But the Valash opening, of course, to counter this Mix opening. Uh, although Mix should survive a C spikes, it, it's it's to be to be determined if the Valash is going to drop it to Puppet Master range because at that point, then really only Seismunch can deal with it. Um, well, Tsunami as well. Subaki has Tsunami on um, Calibus, so there are there are options, I guess. But obviously, you just it just difficult to deal with a puppet master makes just inconvenient at the least yeah the you Alice know band. what blue uh this might be the new and improve uh what you're gonna do about a strat right because uh seismos could go yeah. for a heat up but lash could go for a madness buff and you know what are you gonna do about it huh <laughs> true i mean i i've yeah i mean that could potentially work here actually that's logically 
a very good way to brute force this uh brute force this opening mix doesn't do enough pressure to shut down the the size munch turn one and volorant is the least useful temp to hold this uh so i mean you could be right this could be just a heat up madness buff situation um unless of course suba uh, unless of course ricky decides to all in on the volash but uh i mean Will that do enough? Especially if Madness Buff goes, goes first. I don't think C-Spikes Noxious should kill. But if Madness Buff goes in between C-Spikes and Noxious. Then uh, this Valash is going to probably die outright. So um, it's going to be close. I mean it is a potential what you can do about it. You, you've had me thinking now. You've had me thinking about the potential <laughs> danger here. So I mean it, it will be crazy. Yeah, so rounding out the team, the Cerny, the Volorant, and the Barnchi, obviously really good against the likes of that Calibus. So here we are, game number one of the finals for this weekly number 33 tournament. Tsubaki-chan, as we said, no stranger to this finals position. Ricky Tan, a previous champion in himself, so champion versus champion. Anything can go down, and we are here to witness it. Uh... Like we were talking, Blue, a double, a double buff. You can't get too punished. I mean, at the worst, we could try to think about it. Who do you want to punish more, the Valash or the Size Munch? It's so, it's almost tough to pick. I mean, um, Size Munch wrecks the mix, the Gialis. Valash wrecks the mix, the Vol. Uh, I mean, Valash may be more of a problem, but let's take a look. So, Energy Manip bringing it down to 56%. EM does come down onto the Size Munch, does 45% damage. So, another one of those should suffice. And the Sea Spikes comes through, actually goes on the Volaren. That's a surprising turn of events. And it goes all in. Instead of setting up at all, he just goes straight to the point, and the damage is there. Feather Gatling as well to follow does not do enough to kill but the trade goes the way of ricky here yeah not too bad so subaki foregoing any kind of buff no madness buff no heat up just wants to go pedal to the metal pressure from the opening turn and does just that bringing the volan down to exactly a third left so one more attack uh, should bring it all the way down especially considering a crystal spike crystal spike being special attack will bring the volan which is why exactly ricky tan wanted to retreat it trying to catch the crystal spike with the size munch all right the cerny coming in We'll take the EM, of course. It'll be perfectly fine with that. The Size Munch had to survive. A C Spikes to follow. This Valash is just going all in. But the all in is nullified at completely removed from the from the fight there. WCL, of course, gonna probably scare off Monkey How, aka the Size Munch. But the Valash now out of stamina. Not yeah. uh, not able to pressure the mix here. Such a good read though too from Tsubaki-chan knowing that the Volarin most likely swaps out. Uh, still went for it just in case the Volarin did stay in. But just in case of course it did swap out. Tsubaki retreating the size munch for the Cernif. And that's a whole lot of pressure that Cernif is carrying over to the size munch. Even to the mix as well. I mean we saw a water cutting Lily got the mix exactly around that 39 or 40%. So depending on that TV spread... If Water Can Lily could bring it up to 41%, a Crystal Spike will definitely do the rest. So it depends on those TVs if Tsubaki's been paying attention. Or I guess you want to gun down the, the size much as well. The only thing that could eat it up really well would be Calibus. But you still get a good chunk of damage too. So it's looking on a decent position for Tsubaki just because this Cernif is on the board. Right now, hard fight for Tsubaki Chan. I'm not sure I like, I really like the, the so much stamina expansion on the Valash. Like, it's just not, not able to do anything now. And it's not like there's a really crazy fallback plan, uh, aside from, of course, um, I guess the Barnshee. But again, still Calibus able to pressure out. 
uh, these times the mix is untouched, so not very easy to push. Yeah, even though it didn't get a Manus buff, I still think it was the right moves because it kind of pressured out that aerobic bowler. And if you leave that aerobic on the board a little bit too long, those HKS are going to start adding up. So those crystal spikes, even though they weren't madness buff, it was just enough to make uh, the, the aerobic bowling retreat. But Valash overexerting for that ninja jutsu doing big damage. And Cerny going down from that mix super, super low. Another crystal spike like that will indeed bring it down in this Calibus. Two for one on those toxic skins. You wouldn't think a physical attack coming out from the Valash. Yeah, for sure. Doing a lot of damage, at least, to pump it out there. But the Toxic Tick's going to definitely be a bit of a problem. Toxic Skin doing a lot of work here. So low. And Tsubaki-chan, I mean, you know, he, he used... Uh, the strategy of dropping all of your enemies low is good and all. Especially if, um, if the Gambit pays out in the end. But the problem here is that there's no like direct way he can stop the the Gyalis from just one shotting the Barnchi or even the mix one shotting the Barnchi, right? And the Valash also not in a safe place and it gets even it gets stuck in the not safe place. Water kind Lily thrown out onto the mix here, oh. drops the Puppet Master Rage. That's such Oh, that's so unfortunate. Scavenger buff gonna heal up the Valash, of course, but that is just the Fortunate. WCL putting the mix of puppet back to range. The good news is that Bullerin does have Plume and Seismunch has Wreck. But of course, Seismunch gonna get one shot by a EM here. And really good read for Subaki, knowing that most likely a cage was coming out that turn from the mix. Decides to just rest. So instead of trying to retreat the Valash, just gets a good enough recovery in that stamina. How comes the Volrin so trying to put that pressure onto the Calibus? Can a Crystal Spike, uh, Feather Gatling clean up the Calibus? Maybe a Crystal Dust. You do have a Wind Synergy Crystal Dust, so that's not too bad. Increase it to 80 damage, I believe. So Crystal Dust, Feather Gatling on the Trap Calibus. Is that going to do enough damage to close it out on the Calibus? We do know it is an aerobic, so if it goes before the mix, which I don't think it will if mix clicks uh, crystal spike. Because if it's maybe if it clicks a uh, size surge, it takes advantage, but crystal spike onto the Volrin 100 all the way down to 66, so approximately a third damage. Caldas Feather Gatling as well, doing a lot of decent damage here, so. The fight not over, of course, oh. and he gets the madness buff <laughs> off. He All goes right. for it. And the strangle removes Toxic Plume from the equation. So you know what? Subaki didn't feel comfortable with the earlier madness buff, but here in turn number five was when he decided to finally deploy a madness buff is online. The nasty raid boss Valash, even though 50% remaining to his name, it doesn't matter. We've seen some crazy things go down in this tournament. Valash from a single HP all the way back up to 100. That's what we saw here today. So never count out of Valash. He's out of stamina now. Mix also has a cage again. So this is going to be a, a bit of a mind game. Does Valash just decide to rest? Does Ricky Tan waste a cage? This is a bit of a dicey situation for Subaki. Of course, he wants to retreat Valash, but does this mix let him? And then maybe a free Toxic Ink onto, onto Valash, but no cage. Okay, step one. Alright, the size much gets swapped in. The Valash gets swapped out for that Barnchi. Trying to play it a little bit more safe. Trying to read the EM that comes through. See Spikes to follow. Size much does oh. not go down. 2% HP there. And really good read. So, Knowing he wanted to gun down that special defense one down on the Volrin. Reddit accurately brings in the Seismic, but almost cost him. The biggest question here. Oh no, he doesn't have a melee temp for the wreck. So I think Mix should be able to outspeed the Seismic. Something with the energy manipulation. So Ricky Tan feeling okay for this turn. Of course, Barnchi has a Tornado. Tornado slash Hypoxia. I mean, everything's online for the Barnchi. Should be able to outspeed. 
the question is what is mix doing here could go for an em on the size much could go for a big crystal spike on the barnchi too but he's running out of stamina a bit The Gaelis comes in, the EM to shut down the Size Munch, doesn't even get a move in. And the mix, again, untouchable. Puppet Master keeping it alive. Only Volarin with Plume can stop it at this point in time. So Ricky right. Tan on paper pulling a bit ahead. Subaki Chan with two Temtems down. However, we can't discount that Valash. Valash is indeed set up. So that's gonna be a dangerous, a dangerous Temtem for Ricky Tan to overcome. However, he has more Tems online. Uh Monkey House staying safe in the back. If there's one Temtem that really gets the better of Valash, it's gonna be that size munch from Ricky Tan. So we'll see. I mean, these two Crystal Temtems are really pressuring out this Barnchi, as well as the Volrin. So not too much of a safe swap for Tsubaki-chan. A Crystal Spike, Crystal Bite, doubled into any of these Temps will get the better. But first things first, HKS does a kill. I think a Tornado might be coming out, but no, Crystal Bite goes first. Crystal Spike's killing off the Volrin. Allowing that mix another kill tornado for sure to secure the kill on the Gaelis. But once again, nothing can really touch this mix right now. It is out of stamina, so doesn't have to worry about that, at least for another turn of the Valash still in the back. Still the breadwinner. But I don't know how much bread he can come back home with. Especially hmm. with and you know what, Still? Blue? I think Ricky Tan went for a Crystal Bite. I believe he had Sharp Stab online too. I feel like he had a Sharp Stab there. Maybe thought he would go down to the HKS. Because a Sharp Stab definitely outsped the Barnchi, but a Crystal Bite does not. So if he did, if, I mean, if he had Crystal Bite, he had Sharp Stab too. So maybe had a Sharp Stab there. Because I'm thinking maybe a C Spike from this mix doesn't instantly kill the Barnchi. So Ricky Tan putting Subaki in a predicament, but can this raid boss Valash bring things back for Subaki? Let's take a look. Crystal Dust on the monkey. Not gonna do so much. Some tickle damage, of course, so that that beta burst or EM does enough. But the EM to follow. Ooh, oh, oh Valash is no way he could survive a size oh, much wreck. From rock bottom to the grave, Valash gets picked off, completely stopped by the fact that Mix is untouchable. And that single Water Kung Lily sort of determined this game's trajectory, if I'm being honest. The Water Kung Lily doing too much, and Tsubaki going all in in that early game. Valash expending too much stamina for nothing, perhaps made it way too difficult. Almost. A 5-0 perfect game for Ricky Tan there. To Baki Chan. We'll see how he changes it up because with that performance, Ricky is going half. Mix here in game number two. With game two underway, Subaki opens with a full run this time. Rather than the dynamic duo. And the Barnchi is banned this time first. Oh no, sorry. Barnchi. No, no, no. Barnchi was in the last game for Tsubaki. Sorry, correction. So different ban this time. Ricky mixes it up. Well, he's not going to be able to mix it up. Apologies. It's banned. <laughs> so never mind. Very true. And as we suspect, uh, suspected, the mix did so much work for Little Asia that Tsubaki knew what was the biggest problem and adapting to it, banning the mix. Let's see if that makes all the difference because he, he had banned, I believe it was the Skunch previously. So now that's able to go off. It looks like Tsubaki has no mental Temtems except the Bornchi, which was already banned. So Little Asia, you ban the mix, you give him the Skunch. Is that going to be a difference maker though? The Volarin Skunch for Little Asia here just... Covering a default basis, also to punish a turn to play. 
And Tsubaki might be looking at that turn 2 play, picking up the Surneaf again. Um, sort of a Surneaf Fullerend, in my opinion at least, just kind of looks like a uh, turn 1, we're gonna do our best, but you know, the, the second turn is where we're mostly going to shine for the most part. Um, having those second uh, one hold moves active are very important for both these times, really. Yeah, so it's both solid openings. Of course, Little Asia has that PJAP potential to make matters worse going down the road. But Mushuk also getting the ban. Tsubaki, uh, the second ban was the Gialis. So no Gialis to play with for Tsubaki. Does pick up the Calibus. So strong Temtem trying to get that water pressure onto the size Munch too. Not too bad. But both of these tamers have a Calibus to play with. Does Little Asia want to bring it out? Really good tempt him into Cerneef, so he says yes. Uh, and hey, maybe we might get uh, the size munch from Ricky Tan this guy. We didn't see it last time. Actually, no, we did. We did. It was what killed the Velas. We did. So, yeah, we did. size munch mm -hmm. was the key piece to his win, so might bring it back. So far on this board, it would only be for the Velash and the Koish, perhaps. Gaialis pick up though. Maybe baiting the size munch pickup and then last minute picking Barnshi. It would make sense if uh, Subaki went for a Valashless game. But Subaki considering it. I mean Koish is not that great. It really it's not that great in this matchup. Only Gaialis really is like directly affected by a Quetzaleno. So it wouldn't be such a crazy pickup, but of course, if Seismus gets picked up, then Koish is is really good. But mm -hmm. uh, again, as I mentioned, the board, the, the fact that cha like one of these times Ricky can pick up changes in completely how Subaki has to play this. It, it's so scary because if you pick up Koish and he just picks up Barnchi, then Koish is useful for one matchup, and he yo know, he just pick it up. Gonna make sure yeah. that Seismus is un is not unplayable, but has to keep itself on its toes kind of wants that neutral synergy to pair with that quetzaleno so size munch is gonna be on the back line bench for this game number two is that a mistake i mean it's still, it's still a really good pickup there for subaki fire koish and Velash, some of the best temtems around or Ricky tan saying oh, no he goes the for Velash, it. we gotta take it down so let's go everyone game Number two of our semifinals is awaiting us. Who is taking it home? Ricky Tan just a single victory away from glory. Tsubaki a bit on the back burner, trying to make a difference. Go one game up and then the final game three. That is for him to decide if he wants to take us there. But let's get things started. Uh, pretty impactful game one or turn one rather. A lot of pressure on both sides. Maybe more so with Subaki, but turn two with Skunch, if that's on the board, maybe more pressure on turn two with those crazy savage suplex. Uh, but for turn one, I think that WCL uh, potentially coming out onto Skunch uh, is going to be really big. I think that might be the line of play for Subaki. Just WCL the Skunch, Feather Galling or Noxious Bomb, or maybe Feather Galling to increase the speed right there on the Skunch. Doesn't feel all that bad. For Little Asia, I feel like it's a standard P jab FG turn onto the Volarin. That doesn't feel too bad. Or the Cerneef. Cerneef threatens out the Monkey Howl in the back, so Cerneef could try to uh, try to put put him out earlier than later. A slow turn here for both players trying to figure out what the most ideal play here is HKS or sorry water can Lily coming out and the federal Gatling soon to follow so Tsubaki still playing it aggressively understandably so wants to keep the pressure up does not want to back down perfect jab to trade and if this is a doppelganger's brooch on this bowler this is gonna suck oh. I know oh my god it is. 
Yeah, insane damage. Almost enough to take it out in a single swing. But that's enough. The fact that it's plus one speed, plus one speed. Let's go take a look at the speed arrow. Subaki has the speed arrow. So if it comes down to a speed tie, uh, which we saw previously, Subaki-chan's Volarin was already faster. It could have been from the speed tie, but then that would have flipped. So I think Subaki's uh, Volarin is already indeed faster. So as you said, Blue, HKS, it's online for both of these tamers. Where is it going? I mean, I think Subaki wants to get rid of the Gialas. How can, or sorry, the ETE Skunch. How can Ricky try to mitigate the damage? There's not too much. I don't think any Temtem wants to eat a HKS from this position. Shibaki swaps it out. The Volarin will be leaving. The Koish coming in instead for the side of Subaki. And the Skunch will also get swapped out here for the Gyalis. So just a lot of swapping out here. Toxic Pull That's will big. do a lot of damage. And an attack down as well is Major. Yeah, Major and catches it before the WCL. So this Kiala is not going to be taking all that much. But wow, even 33% reduction on its attack. And it still does about 40%. So impressive amount of damage. You know what? It's almost with a settling Cerniv going to be balancing out in the long run. If Subaki is able to leave the Cerniv on the board for a bit, it will be able because that's what? Three turns now. So eight times three. So back up, almost back to base attack. The big question here, mm. what does Ricky Tan want to do with this Gialis? Because we know if Subaki brings in a Valash, Wetzeleno will be able to outspeed. Unless the Noxious Bomb kills the Koish first. Hmm. Yeah, right now, Gialis still potentially. Uh, Quetzaleno should kill it instantly. But of course, Noxious Bomb trade could just trade one for one. And of course, that minus one attack doesn't... Oh, that does put a question mark on the Quetzaleno kill. That's if it true. Sort of lives at like 0.5% uh, HP or otherwise, it could be crazy. But Ricky is not taking the chance. Calibus will be swapped in instead. And this Koish will also be swapped out, reading a potential swap in. And look at that trading... Tit for tat, Calibus for Calibus, and the Noxious Bomb will punish the Cerny. No WCL coming through. Ooh, actually on the Calibus spot, so decent damage, but not quite there. WCL goes at last, of course, because the Volarin is so speedy, and the WCL does a lot more damage than the Noxious. But the Toxic Tick's going to be punishing here, as well as the OX. So, Tsubaki now out of stamina on the Cerny, and losing options for damage here. The trades are not going his favor and that does not bode well yeah now this is tough with the calibus being on subaki's board right now there is no toxic thames in the back except the volrin to try to do some damage uh but that makes it somewhat easier to do a toxic ink onto the cerny if volrin comes out that minus one defense would definitely do the additional nine percent and then Volrin could have a good HKS, but no Ricky Tan preserving the Volrin for down the road. Trying to take advantage of trying to bring that Ninja Jutsu online with the swap in here. Oh, what a good strangle, but the double strangle. Things are heating up in terms of slowing down for just this turn though. Yeah, impressive stuff. I think uh, Ricky Tan and Subaki both reading. So everything not going to be able to do anything. This is like a free think turn, right? Nothing could do anything. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> this is they just can trying just to take... think a yeah. couple turns ahead, perhaps. Just like chess. They, they can take the full minute to do absolutely nothing. So swap out does happen. Ricky Tan swaps in for the Volarin just to get rid of those holds on his uh, Volarin potentially to follow up. Volarin to swap in as both players are 
doing the exact same thing. Of course, the only difference is the Skunch and the Valash retainers. And Subaki still has a Speed Arrow, so... Speed Arrow is still available. Ricky is unable to stop Subaki's Volaren from getting an attack off, which is the big thing. Yeah, so Subaki, as you said, does have the Speed Arrow, so he should be going first. I think he just naturally has the faster Volaren regardless of that. So going into that Skunch should all be certainty to go all the way down, but maybe... Hmm, yeah, I don't actually know. Probably just wants to go after the Skunch. You do have Ninja Jutsu online, but that 1 plus speed will still allow the Volant to go faster than the Skunch. So Skunch should not be able to go off here, and Skunch such a big tempt him into the Valash. Is this a free Madness buff for Tsubaki-chan? I don't see any too, too much of a downside. Maybe a HKS onto Valash, but you should be able to live at least from plus one speed. I don't, I think, I think this might be not a free Madness buff, but maybe an essential one. Because you can Madness Absolutely. buff, get a little bit reco- mm, Never mind, you won't recover since Skunch dies before the Madness buff. Right. You'd have to kill the skunch before you manage stuff, otherwise you just die mm -hmm. because of Oshidashi, right? So HKS kills Skunch, Madness buff, and then Feather Gatling kills Subaki's Volaren, and then you'll be fighting you both of them would have a Tem that can fight back essentially. And I think that's what they're well not they're probably not both thinking the same thing. They're probably thinking along the same lines of potentially deciding to trade or potentially deciding to swap out. Uh, right now, of course, Ricky has HP advantage, just a severe HP advantage. Um, but so Subaki, I think Subaki would be more than happy with trading the Volarin for uh, the Skunch here, especially if he gets uh, um, amped up Valash. It'll be such a major threat going forward. Yeah, we'll see. We see the impact of this turn. Both of these tamers taking their time. They know this is such an important turn. Does Valash get a Madness buff? Do you save your Skunch for down the road? Uh, where are you directing these HKSs? A lot of questions need these answers. Uh, it looks like it's Ricky Tan thinking about it a bit more. Maybe knowing what can I swap into? Do I just leave Skunch to take one for the team? And it looks like the answer is going to be the Monkey. So trying to set up for a Haptor that Seismon Trek the following turn. So HKS 100, oh, not even 50%, so solid damage. Yeah, and the HKS comes through, all in follows. Wow, that HKS for that? Yeah. Ricky perhaps thought he was faster, but a bit suspicious there. But the, the trade does come through, so Baki's the ideal plan comes through. Unfortunately, he doesn't get the one-for-one one trade, but at least he gets the madness buff off. So, Ricky might... I'm concerned that he's slowly playing into Tsubaki's hand. Remember how he beat... Um, I believe how Tsubaki beat uh, Rishi was the fact that Rishi, Rishi no longer had... Um, no longer had Thames of very... Oh, sorry, Doiko. He beat Doiko. By making sure that all of his Thames were below 50% HP and so Valash could just clean house thereafter. And he could just pick them off one by one. So, Ricky hopefully not playing into that sort of position. Of course, rock bottom. Actually, he can't play it. WCL should go fast enough here to do enough damage and perhaps a Ninja Jutsu follow suit. For Tsubaki, kill off the, kill off the sides one spot. And really only Calibus can survive that. Yeah, really tough position Little Asia is finding himself in, or rather Tsubaki is putting Little Asia in. Because as you said, WCL uh, does throw out the, the monkey here, but Valash feeling the pressure, wants to save it for a little bit down the road where everything's a bit unhealthy. So Noxious Bomb, is it 31%? It is! Cerny not even able, able to get off anything. Yeah, absolutely, getting rid of that uppercut, follow suit, does as much damage as possible, but not quite there. So, Subaki losing that Sterneath is big. He didn't even get a trade-off for that. And this is looking 
grim now. The Volar end. No stamina though, so this Koish actually has a chance here. Unless he wants to all in HKS, kill the Calibus. Or something along those lines. Yeah, he he actually overexerted though. He overexerted, so Volarin oh, right, 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 is not right. able to go off anything. So perhaps the best swap, something like Calibus, try to get uh, try to eat that Quetzaleno, perhaps. Or if you want to rest, it's not too bad. I mean, you could try to take the damage from. Uh, but you know, Koish most likely wants to pressure out the size munch with the water cannon. One water cannon for 45 percent should be enough to clean up the monkey adding up that 12.5 percent 100 percent of water cannon from this position should close it out for the monkey uh maybe volarin feels okay resting and as you said blue you rest with the volarin you get that crazy hyperkinetic strike the falling turn but no outcomes of volarin who's coming in okay the skunch all right so everything's online the skunch has been waiting for the best opportunity for this ninja jutsu Oh, and the rock bottom to throw down here, doing as much damage as possible. Let's go. Doesn't get the kill on either, but that's a lot of damage. That's a lot of damage he cannot afford. To, uh, sorry, Subaki cannot afford to lose. Water Jet doesn't kill, but that's what the Toxic Tick is for. So, gets the first kill finally for Subaki Chan's side. The Skunch is low, but Ninja Jutsu available. And man, you know, the name of the game in this tournament was Aerobic Volarins. We've been seeing a lot of success with the Anaerobic Volarins, but everyone coming out to play with the speedier bird, and that is the Aerobic. And the fact that they always go first is such a headache. So even with the Nature Synergy, a plus two Volarin, a simple Noxious Bomb closes it out for Koish. A simple Hyperkinetic completely kills the Calibus too. So this Volarin... Uh, has pretty much been the MVP of a lot of games, and we're seeing it here. Ricky Tan using it uh, to perfection with this aerobic. Has skill potential on Koish. And ETE the Skunch, he's been waiting, waiting this whole time for a big Savage Suplex or a big Ninja Jutsu. Does he want to retreat and bring it in, perhaps for the Valash? Because if you get rid of these Thames, you still have to deal with the Valash. Koish low, Calibus 50% HP, facing Volarin Aerobic with a shotgun strike, Hyper Kinetic Strike. I mean, it's a nickname I love calling it is Hyper Kill Strike because yeah. it does insta give you. Yeah, especially you especially considering from these speedy Aerobic birds. So absolutely, Hyper Kill Strike looking to kill one of Subaki Chan's Thames. Uh, and has the ability to do so. The question here, does Volarin have to overexert to do so? Because if he overexerts, uh, then the Valash is going to have an easier time since that minus three defense is a real thing. But no, the blue. Oh. All right. What a great play from Ricky Tan. Also get you that Koish, the Volarin with plus two speed is literally the fastest Tem in the game. And the worst part about this is now the Valash... He's hoping that he's faster than the Gyalis. If he gets a Gyalis kill, perfect, right? Actually, he could probably instant give the Volar end here as well. So, not out of the woods. Ricky is not out of the woods. If he yeah, can, I know. If, if this Gyalis... <laughs> this is a lot closer it, than it seems. If this Valash gets a snowball off, then there's nothing to stop it. If Ricky stops it in his tracks right here, then of course it is game over. HKS all in for the biscuit. It kills up the Calibus actually. So it wants he wants a 1v4 situation. The Lash versus the universe. And the universe shall giveth. That's crystal spikes on the Gaialis. The smart play getting rid of that hook kick potential. Heals the Valash and oh boy. Oh boy. Oh hot diggity dog. Yeah, we got ourselves a match. Subaki on the way is Valash, you know, Valash carrying the weight of Subaki's existence here in the finals. One game down, he needs this desperately. Valash is looking good. He has 100% HP. His stamina is healthy. Can this Valash 1v4 
We're about to find out. So Volarin swaps back out for Calibus. Not trying to go down. Here goes the Ninja Jitsu. Let's see how much it was going to do. I mean, we got we to gotta deduct like 20% because Scavenger's coming back up, though. Absolutely. 30% more HP. And there is no HKS. Ladies and gentlemen, there is no HKS. It did not stay in the board to rest. This Volarin wow. cannot lay out the pain. This is it. Yeah, you're absolutely right, Blue. I mean, Volarin could feather Gatling, but Scavenger proc gonna mitigate all that damage. And then a Calibus versus a Madness buff Valash. We all know what's gonna happen there. Man, Ricky, look confident, look comfortable up to this very point, but we all know we can never, ever count out of Valash, especially a Madness buff Valash. And I think Subaki will be taking this home. Feather Gatling, how much is it gonna do? Yeah, about the 20% is going to heal up here. Absolutely. Crystal Dust doesn't need to even scavenge. Crystal Spikes. Holy my word. Toxic Ink to connect, though. I mean, if this Calibus survives four turns, Valash loses. <laughs> but we got it's to. not looking likely. Yeah, I think he by got, turn 15, 100%. Yeah. So one Crystal Spike, maybe one kill right here. Let's take a look. It might be a max special defense, Calibus. So does oh, survive. It's... Wait a second. Oh, Wait a water second. Water oh, oh, God. God. <laughs> it's Dog Valash. Water Jet takes it. Oh, what? my. God. What? He takes it from the spinner. <laughs> oh, my God. Subaki from the grasp of coming back. The water jet takes the kill and Calibus takes it for Ricky Tan.